Did you have an enjoyable Equinox, Kate? Well, it wasn't terrible. Not too hungover? Uh, not hungover. <laughs> not hungover. Not hungover at all. You? No. No, amazingly. That's a good point. Huh. Okay. Uh, the key is to hydrate. The key is to... Right. We, we mentioned right. before you got to alternate, right? Alternate waters with whiskey drinks or whatever it is you might be drinking. Uh, well, that's ideal. Sometimes it happens that way and sometimes... It doesn't, but yeah, if you alternate, you're in better shape, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have to admit, correct, there have been times where I failed at the hydration task, you know, and it's like, uh, another beer, shouldn't you drink some of that water? No. No, it just never works out. Less room in my stomach for beer right now, if I do that, I mean, come on. No, I get so excited. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'll drink water after this one. But that's the way to do it, yes, do an every other beer and water or just make sure that when you get a new beer your water is depleted you know you can have some beer or whatever drink it's up to you listener Mm -hmm. uh and then have some water then have some beer then have some water you know you could put your drink on ice and keep adding ice your drink uh hmm really Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which drink any drink uh when you say on, on ice you mean submerge it into a bucket of ice no i mean like putting ice in your receptacle of beverage what if beer's in there yeah oh really you throw ice into your beer mm-hmm 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 sounds kind of familiar now i think but that water that's no good you don't want to do that to your beer um if you want to stay hydrated and want to keep drinking beer it's a good idea to drink beer on ice wow okay yeah i would uh-huh. never think to try such a thing we've talked about this okay it was my bartender's trick I drink beer on ice while I was working. Oh. Yeah. And I like it in the summer, too. And especially if you want to, like, kind of stay hydrated, not get too carried away. Beer on ice, not a bad idea. Okay. So, it, uh, what would you say? Does the beer end up becoming 20% water, you think? Probably. Huh. Okay. I feel like i'll just alternate beers and waters but that's yeah i should try that at least once i shouldn't don't knock it till you try it you should isn't that what they say i agree yep. unless it's like heroin or something i mean there's some really bad things you shouldn't be trying yeah unless it's like you know jumping off of a bridge or something like that right yeah. right because um, your friends are doing that come on now mm-hmm. yep come if you on. get like a big uh a big tumbler full of fillet of ice and then you put your beer in there not so it foams. You got to pour it right. And then you put a couple of lime wedges in there. Oh, it's great. Hmm. Oh, the lime wedges can do a lot of work there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Adding some flavor back in, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, limes are nice, but you could do it without. Okay. I'm sure the beer people across the country and maybe even in your own head are like, what? That's yeah. sacrilege. But. And around the world, Kate, because remember, the internet mm-hmm. goes all over the place, except for like North Korea, and then it's heavily censored in like China and maybe Russia. But you can uh, stream us there at kj1055.com, stream us live with music and stuff. You can get the podcast as well, which is the show minus the music. And uh, that's free in your podcast player of choice, Kate. Podcast player of choice. Mm-hmm. Tell a friend. So free. And we are about free on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just listened to a new podcast and I listened to the first episode. I'm like, oh, this sounds so good. And I go to listen to the second episode. You have to have a subscription. I'm like, Mm. Mm -hmm. so I think it's important to say that uh, for Matt and Kate, you don't need a subscription. Yep. It's free. It's a Matt and Kate promise. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can subscribe to the podcast and new episodes show up in your podcast player, but we're not going to charge you for that. Right. So go forth. Enjoy Matt and Kate. And KJ1055, wherever you go, for free. Exclusions uh, apply. See dealer for details. <laughs> Those exclusions I actually already mentioned. You know, the internet. Right. Where the internet isn't so especially hot. And uh, North Korea. Yeah, North Korea especially. I don't think you want to be in there. I don't think that's a good Mm-mm. vacation spot. Mm-mm. I mean, it's not like one of those places where people are like, oh, I'd love to see North Korea in the fall. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea if it's pretty there in the fall or not, Kate. It's really a... No clue. Really devastating. They won't tell you if it is. <laughs> nope, don't don't ask. Don't ask. You gotta be like smuggled in there, I think. 
climb some mountains or something. I don't know uh, mm. the exact travel arrangements to get into North Korea, but I know people have successfully gotten in and gotten out. People get there. These wily journalists that make their way into North Korea uh, smuggled inside of a something, I don't know, basket. I give up. Cardboard box? Cardboard box, yeah. yeah. And it says, not a foreign citizen on the side of the box. Totally legit shipping here. No hidden U.S. journalist in this box. You got to be really dedicated to journalism to yeah. smuggle yourself in. Yeah. People don't mess around, Kate. To North Korea. Yeah. Well, all these people that work in war zones and stuff, you know, like in Afghanistan, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, we still have like 120 journalists we need to get down to there. And like, oh, my God. Didn't realize all that journalism was happening in there. I knew that. I mean, obviously, we knew that <laughs> there's some. But uh, uh, embedded embedded journalists with troops and stuff. Yeah. Seems like a, an interesting thing to do. I don't know. But journalists in the country where we're at feels more safe than journalists getting smuggled into a country where we're not. So that there's no, like... Lifeline. We can't get you out. You smuggled yourself in. You got to smuggle yourself out. <laughs> you think it's safer to be a journalist in the United States than it is in Afghanistan, Kate? I would be willing to bet yes. Huh. huh. I don't know. Some of these anti vaxxers, anti maskers, Kate, you write the wrong story. And they're at your house. You know, maybe. I don't know. Right. But at your house, you've got family to know that you're under attack, whereas across the globe, Nobody knows. Oh, I thought you got family to, family to shield yourself with. But it's, oh, yeah. It's, get behind one of your children. All right. Good points, Kate. Yep. Yep. Every now and then. Kate, did you see that uh, Joan Soda is bringing back turkey and gravy flavor? Oh, no. You familiar with Joan Soda? The fancy sodas. I that... have never had Jones Soda, but I am familiar with Jones Soda. Too rich for your blood? Mm. It's just like one of those things like, oh, that's a good idea. And then just like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, sodas that come in a variety of different kind of mm. fruity flavors, right? But also some of the traditional root beers and things like that. You'd recognize right. the bottle if you saw it, dear listener. Yeah, absolutely. But a uh, turkey and gravy flavor. So this is something that they've done before, but they haven't done it in uh, 10 years, Kate. It's been 10 years uh, since the last turkey and gravy flavored <laughs> Jones Soda. Uh, I looked up Jones Soda news. Mm-hmm. So food and wine, it's got the headline, Jones Turkey and Gravy Soda is coming back after a decade. And then Ad Week, Jones Soda revives gag-inducing turkey and gravy flavor after a decade off shelves. I'm like, well, that's a glowing review right there. <laughs> gag-inducing. Do yep. you think they'll pull that quote and put it on the label, Kate? Oh, absolutely. Gag-inducing oh. hyphen mm-hmm. ad age. Yeah, like it's a movie review or something. I don't know. What are Have other? you had it? No, I haven't. I would take a. I would take a taste of it. Yeah. Well, I think I would take a taste of it. Sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know that I would want to commit to a bottle of it. All right. You know, I would. I would commit to a bottle of it. You would commit to a bottle. Well, the single serving bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like a two liter. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would drink a bottle of this. I think I could make it. Make it through it. All right. What about salmon? Soda. Salmon soda is a thing? It's a Jones soda flavor. Okay. Uh, n- n- okay, fine. Sure. I guess. I don't know. Okay. What about poutine? <laughs> uh, that's another one that exists? Yeah. Um, okay, sure. I guess I'm signing up for all the Jones soda variants. Okay. But it's going to be difficult if we got to try hard to find them, right? Mm, yeah. I think you have to do some deep dives yeah. on the internet. Super fans have been consistently asking for another chance to buy the savory product. In a, quote, leave them wanting more strategy, there will be only 35,000 bottles available, Kate. Okay, so this is one of my big pet peeves, Matt. Ooh, individually numbered for collectability. <laughs> when somebody says that's disgusting... 
before even trying something. Yeah. And I'm guilty of it myself, but mm. especially when someone's going to partake in it. Like when there's food on your plate and you're like, that looks gross. And you're like, thanks, I'm going to eat that. But I'm looking <laughs> at a picture of this turkey and gravy soda. <laughs> yeah. And it says gag inducing flavor. But I just pictured like my mom's gravy pan at Thanksgiving in this bottle. It's like they just tipped the gravy pan and it's in the bottle. And I kind of did the whoop in, in, my, in my mouth a little bit, like... So I'm breaking my own pet peeve. I'm because one, cause like, yeah, the photos here they show a variety of different art for the label on these Jones sodas. You're saying one of these in particular disgusts you? The one on the far right, the one where it's got like the corn on the cob. Yeah, I'm looking in that bottle for like gravy floaties. Oh, like meat floaties. Like that's the color. I gotcha. Where it looks like it's yeah. I see what you're saying. The color coming through the glass, illuminating, yeah, this light from behind or something like that. And it's also carbonated, right? Because it's soda? I would assume so. Yeah, since it's soda. Oh, yeah. man. Mm. But only 35,000 available, so it might be hard to find. You know how I'm a big smeller of drinks. I don't want to <laughs> smell this drink, Matt. I, I don't even want to smell it. Like, I might hang out with you in the same room while you... Really? Yeah. Not even smell it? I don't think I could do it. Come on, Kate. And turkey, Thanksgiving is my favorite meal in the whole wide world. Mm. And I don't think I could, like, yeah, I don't even want to smell it. Well, you wouldn't have this with your turkey and gravy. This is for you to have ahead of Thanksgiving. No, no, no. I know. I also don't want to ruin it. Like, yeah, maybe it's because oh. turkey a Thanksgiving meal is like my favorite in the whole wide world. Like this is like uh, not going to hold a candle to it because it's never going to be as good. You worry, you worry you're going to... Okay, so I think you had mentioned before when you were a kid, you had too much pumpkin pie in a sitting, and that oh, yeah. damaged your ability to enjoy pumpkin pie going forward. I think I'm a little sensitive this morning, because you said pumpkin pie, and I just did like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little easily gag-induced today? I guess. Maybe it was just the gag-induced <laughs> headline. So is that your concern here with this Jones soda, turkey and gravy? No. Is that it's going to hurt your ability to enjoy Thanksgiving? I don't think so. I think it's going to, there's no way it's going to taste as good as Thanksgiving. I, and plus it's carbonated. And really this one bottle is super distracting, Matt, that I'm like, if you go to take a drink, are you going to be like, Looking for the bits of turkey in there, like, but there isn't. It looks like bits of turkey in there, but there isn't. But this color in this, sh it looks like the bottom of the gravy pan. Yeah, it looks like maybe broth or something like that. I think you're being really kind when you say that. Really, it's it's almost see through. Almost broth. Broth is not the word I thought of, but what'd you think of, Kate? Well, I'm not going to say it on the radio, Matt. That bad, huh? Okay. That bad. Some kind of indigestion situation? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Like? Okay. Hmm. They say it's an intentionally challenging flavor, Kate. In, well, at least they, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've taken enough of a breather from this flavor, and we think this is the right time to bring it back. There's a whole generation, an entire demographic of Gen Z and younger millennials that's never tried it, but maybe just heard of it. Yeah, and you and I as geriatric millennials, Kate, uh, I'm, I know I've heard of this before, but never tried it. No. No, but if you scroll down to the big picture they have, Jones special release, and it's yeah. got the big turkey on the platter with the gravy boat behind it. Yeah. Are those grapes <laughs> I think on so. the plate <laughs> with the turkey and orange slices? Uh, maybe they're, yeah, it looks like they're grapes. Okay. Maybe they're... Does Mama Stooks put grapes on her no. turkey platter? No. Uh, are they supposed to be cranberries? Could that just be... No. Like just, I know not cranberry sauce or whatever, but... They almost look more like, like under that first wing, it looks like black olives. But why would you put black olives next to your oranges? Or why would you put black olives under a turkey? I don't know. Blueberries? <laughs> yeah, they look like... Yeah, some kind of cross between, uh, what are they called black grapes? What do you what do you call those? Red grapes. Red grapes. 
don't but know. they're much darker. Yeah. Yeah, they look like they're half blueberry, half grape because they're too big mm-hmm. to be blueberries. Right. But uh, I don't think that there's probably not a hint of that flavor in there. I wouldn't think. I don't. Yeah. Just makes me wonder: Do people put their turkeys on grapes and orange slices? That's weird. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, are these supposed to be garnish? You know, I, I, I would be thrown. I wouldn't question. I wouldn't question the host of this Thanksgiving, but I'd be like, huh, interesting. There's a, a turkey lying in a bed of grapes and oranges. You wouldn't ask questions, not like in a, a rude way, like, "What the hell's your turkey on?" You, I mean, I can't see you doing that, but you wouldn't be like, yeah. "Huh." Grapes, huh? You eat those after the turkey? Or? I would inquire. I would inquire. Yeah, you're right. I, I wouldn't yeah. say, what's wrong with you? That wouldn't be my question. <laughs> I'd say, oh, hey, weirdos. I hadn't heard of using grapes and orange slices to adorn a turkey before. Where'd you get that idea? You try to sound pleasant. Okay. Now, this may be a major leap, Matt. Uh-huh. Jones Soda, aren't they kind of popular for their orange soda and their grape soda? Uh, makes sense to me. Yeah, I think maybe. Do you think this is a nod to like jones soda that they've got oranges and grapes there even though it has nothing to do Uh, good point kate good point that's a good i bet you Mm. Mm -hmm. it's a good guess but if there are people out there that put their turkeys on orange slices and grapes you're not weird it's just explain it to us okay yeah matt and kate on facebook go find matt and kate on facebook and while you're at it find matt and kate in your podcast player of choice do you want me to put this picture on our Facebook page so they can be like, oh, yeah. yeah, our family does this all the time. Fantastic idea, Kate. Yes. Okay. I'll do that. Matt and Kate on Facebook. Look at the photo and explain yourself. <laughs> and explain. Matt, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question without making it sound like I'm a t- terrible driver. Oh, but okay. I often have to multitask as a driver with mm. children. Sounds dangerous. Okay? It does, but I've been doing it long enough. I think I'm a professional at it. So I think other people do things more dangerous than handing snacks back to their kids. Um, but every now and then when we take road trips, like we'll have to stop and get like, you know, go through a drive through and we've got kids who want ketchup with their French fries. Yeah. And I'm not a big fan of it because I never feel like you can get all the ketchup out of the packet. And I also feel oh. like you shouldn't be doing ketchup while we're driving. Like, that's just a bad idea. You're going to ketchup all over Black Beauty. I know. I know. Hmm. I mean, it is not the... The outside is definitely cleaner than the inside. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. They don't have a good ketchup removal apparatus at the uh, car wash. That you go to every day. Mm-hmm. I've got Clorox wipes that I carry with me. So okay, yeah. But Heinz has released this Heinz packet roller, where you put your packet of ketchup in, and you can roll out every drop of ketchup that's in that packet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and it's you can put it on your keychain, so you never have to be without it. Now, I wouldn't put it on my keychain while I'm driving, but if you're having a picnic or, oh, let me get the roller out. and uh, But it's only $5.70. You might be able to run the ketchup packet through there. You might be able to run the ketchup packet through, through, through there as the keys dangle out of the ignition, right? You, I, okay, so I awkward, multitask, but... but I would not do that. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> wise, yeah. I saw a sticker on the back of a car the other day that I need to either find out where this woman had it or have it recreated. It says, I'm not a drunk driver. I'm a mom. I'm passing snacks and whooping ass. And I was like, whoa. Damn. I don't know about the whooping ass part, but I definitely am a snack passer. So. Well, eventually you'll whoop some A, Kate. Gosh, I hope I'm past that, right? I can't use such language personally on the radio. Really? My mo- my mom might be listening. Mom, you better be listening. You're listening, right? Okay. You don't think your mom's going to be like, you're 40 years old, Matt. You can say that word? Oh. Okay. Uh, no, I, I curse and say all kinds of horrible things in front of my mom. Don't worry, Kate. Okay. Okay. All right. So the Heinz Packet Roller, I have this in front of me now. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. I you pointed out the price, five seventy, you think that's a good price? I feel like that's um uh, I think that's a fair price considering you're advertising for Heinz with it having you know the print on there and the classic fifty seven embossed mm-hmm. on the back side. Established nineteen sixty nine. <laughs> Eighteen sixty nine, sorry. But I love the marketing. What was once taxing becomes simple. Just snip and roll to squeeze out every drop of your sauce of choice. Yeah, it's not just for ketchup. I guess if you want to put the mayonnaise pack in there. They'll allow it. Yep. Or what are some other places with the sauces? Taco Bell has sauces, right? Oh, yeah. I get some fire, run some fire sauce through there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to go fire. Gone are the days of fumbling with ketchup packets. Pants ruined by mustard disasters. And minutes taken off your life trying to get the bottom of that mayo packet. Thanks, Heinz. <laughs> Patent pending, Heinz packet roller. Huh. Patent pending. Have you really had that much difficulty getting condiments out of squeezable packets, Kate? Not when I'm just sitting there, but I think like when we're driving, they're like, oh, it's all gone. I'm like, you just used a smidge of it. Like, get it all out. Okay, I guess I can relate to this because it under features. It says packet corner cutter, keychain accessory, pocket size design, works with a variety of sauces. So now I remember having difficulty opening a ketchup packet before, you know, you start eating some fries or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm-hmm. I need to open another packet of ketchup. And then you're like, oh, no, my fingers are too greasy. I can't get this packet open. So that packet right. corner cutter seems like a nice feature. But as far as just going like you just go. See, I can't do it as good as you. You just go, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, with your fingers right across the, right? Doesn't that get all the ketchup right. out? Sometimes, I mean, and then you get ketchup on the packet, and you're like, that could have been on a fry. So, oh. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's more like ideal situation for a sitting setting than driving to get all the ketchup out, but... I also, what is it, supply and chain problems right now where there's a shortage of ketchup packets? So restaurants are like, no, we're not going to bring you a handful of ketchup packets anymore. You get two packets. Was that a thing? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, I'm in the checkout now for this deal. Okay. And they accept the terms and conditions. So, uh, yeah, it's five seventy, and shipping is two bucks. So for seven dollars and seventy cents, and I imagine if you order a bunch of them, let me go back to my cart here. I mean, stocking stuffers, right? Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking, Kate. Uh, let me go back to my cart and add another one of those in there. Come on, sheesh! Come on, Heinz. HeinzPacketRoller.com. dot com. They have their a dedicated website just for the packet roller, huh? I add to cart. I want two of them. Hmm. Okay. It's not letting me add more than one to the cart. How can this be? Come on, Heinz. The next step of the checkout. You're right. I probably can go to the next step and maybe change the quantity. Quantity one. Payment information. Hmm. Wow. Heinz, you got to work on this website. HeinzPacketRoller.com. I don't know how to increase the quantity here without just having to make multiple orders. I can't. This isn't clickable where it says one, Kate. Oh, dear. All right. I'll have to do some more research on this and... uh Get back with him. Yeah, I'm wondering if they're thinking that why would anyone buy more than one? I don't know. It seems, like you said, a perfect uh, stocking stuffer. Yeah. Magic every day, it says on their logo on the checkout screen, Kate. Heinz established 1869. Magic every day. Ketchup. Told you about how I bought my friend a bunch of ketchup chips for his birthday once, right? Uh-uh. Yeah, for a while there, and maybe they still exist. There were potato chips that were infused with ketchup. Mm-hmm. And so uh, my friend Mike's got kind of, he's kind of gross to watch with ketchup. He'll, <sighs> he'll eat too much. He'll eat the ketchup, you know? Okay. Or lick it clean or something. It's, 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 it's gross. And I was like, oh, I should get him some ketchup chips. Canadian Lay's. All right, Lay's ketchup chips. Yeah, it looks, it looks like they're still... One bag, $26.88. Wow. You really like Mike. Limited edition. I forget how much it was back then, but I bought him a case. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Now, this was in college. 
And so he and his uh, roommates got drunk and like ate them all in the night. <gasps> and I was like, I gave oh. you a bunch of individually wrapped ketchup chips. You were supposed to make those last, buddy. You were supposed to you devoured them all drunk. Was that an indication that you have to be drunk to eat ketchup chips? <laughs> uh, not if you're Mike, I don't think. I'm sure he had some sober before they all got drunk and tore into him. Okay, I love ketchup, and I love potatoes, and I love potato chips, but ketchup on potatoes, other than French fries, or, or tater tots, <laughs> or yeah. hash browns, I'm out. Like, not ketchup on mashed potatoes, not ketchup on a baked potato, not ketchup on a Lay's potato chip. Hmm. No thanks. Well, it's infused with ketchup. Yeah, you know? I just, yeah. It doesn't come with dipping, uh, dipping thing. Right, right, just, right. Okay. I mean, pickle chips, yes, but ketchup? Ooh, you can alternate. I don't know. Ketchup chip, pickle chip. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I even sampled one of them. I don't think even I got the chance to sample. No, I was like... Here you go, Mike. Happy birthday. Or I may have given them to him for Christmas. I forget. But either way, I became aware that they existed and I needed to give them to him. Matt, you're a much nicer gift giver than I am because there's a reputation I have built for myself and my family that I will give you the gift, but I'm going to try it first. So like I would give my brothers opened movies. Yeah, horrible. Or- <laughs> But I wouldn't, like, if I was giving them, like, a case of chips, I would take a bag for myself. If I was just giving them a bag of chips, I wouldn't open the bag to eat a chip. Or would I? <laughs> I wouldn't put a bag. Couldn't you uh, seal it back together so it looked like it wasn't open, maybe? Um, with scotch tape. Yeah, that wouldn't give it away, right? That we, Yeah, but <laughs> if we're trying to not give it away. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Unless you've got a really stupid friend you're giving it to or family member. Right. I don't know if I've done it to friends. I know I've done it to my family members, but I don't know if I've done that to friends. Opened up their gifts. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, he likes this movie. I'm going to open it up and make sure the disc works. I had to make, I had to verify that mm-hmm. the disc works. Mm-hmm. I read this book before I'm giving it to you. Yeah. <laughs> you've got notes in the margins and <laughs> rabbit ears all over the place. Um, is that what they're called? Dog ear. What are they called? Dog ears. Dog ears dog is what it is when you dog eared okay. pages. Yeah. I'm like, rabbit ears. Close enough. Those are antenna, right? Close enough. Similar animal. <laughs> They're both mammals. True. Right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> They're not marsupials. No. Remember the, that one day we had some confusion over marsupials. And by we I mean me, but you know. <laughs> you gonna order one of these condiment deals? One of these what's it called again? Ketchup, uh, ketchup roller. What's it called? Ketchup roller or whatever. You're gonna Ken Heinz packet roller. Packet roller. Because they're not calling it a ketchup roller. Because on the website, it's like it will work for uh, mayo. It's the Heinz packet roller. Yeah, it'll work for mayo, mustard. Every squeeze every drop out of your sauce of choice. One hundred percent satisfaction. One hundred percent. Sauce extraction. Wow. And they got good copywriters over there. Uh-huh. At Heinz. Yeah, it just looks like it's for ketchup since it's that iconic Heinz red. Right. I imagine most people would use it for ketchup. Oh no. Not to say. I am gonna ask something probably silly. Oh, okay. Heinz fifty seven. Have you ever seen those in, in packets? Uh Heinz fifty seven? Yeah. Um, I feel like I've seen Heinz in packets, whether or not it's got the 57 branding is what you're saying? No, 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 no. The 57 sauce, Matt. Are you not familiar with Heinz 57 sauce? I thought 57 was just like, well, we got 57 varieties of sauces Mm -mm. or something. Okay. Heinz 57. Google Heinz 57. Okay. Sauce, not dog. Oh, sauce. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, okay. So I'm... Okay. Heinz 57 sauce. Are you not familiar with that condiment? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever okay. had it. No, I'm, I'm familiar it's with the label. Good. Now that I've got the label in front of me, I'm familiar with this. But yeah. they also, they put the little 57 right there on the regular ketchup bottles, though. Right. So, but I was just thinking, I've never seen 57 sauce in a packet. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I 
No, I can't say that I have either. I don't know. Is it that popular yeah. of a thing? Well, it says steak sauce when I it says shop now, Target, yeah. Dollar General, steak sauce. I've mm-hmm. never put it on steak. I know people who probably do, but it's more of a chicken thing for me. Well, on the label here, I'm looking at a label. It says add zest to steak, chicken, and pork. Yeah. So it's not just Walmart or wherever, wherever website you're at. Yeah. All right. So uh, there you go. Heinz. Uh, what's it called again? I keep on forgetting. It's such a catchy name. <laughs> Packet roller. Heinz Packet Roller. There you go. Heinz Packet Roller available for eh, about eight bucks after shipping. One at a time. One, and possibly you can order one. At, you might only be able to order one per order. You might need to. Not sure if you need multiple credit cards. Like, huh, sorry, you already ran this credit card once on this item. Right? Yeah. I never know. I'd like a baker's dozen, please. Please. 